Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Got a little something different for you today. No carpentry, no cabinetry, no renovations, no tool review, no unboxing, okay? Today we're going to do a preseason check on my 1978 Honda Hawk CB400 T2. I'm going to change the oil, I'm going to retorque the head, I'm going to check the valve clearances, brake fluid, um, the air pressure, and we'll also uh, take a look at the chain and uh, lights and everything. We're just going to go right through it make sure it's ready for the season. Okay, so let me get you set up and we'll get started. Before we get to pulling wrenches, I have a very important announcement to make. I hired a co-host for the channel. He's here today and I wanna introduce him to you right now. His name is Finnegan. Come on up, bud. This is Finnegan. He's a nine month old Brindle Scottish Terrier. He's my new buddy. And I've been with him here for the past couple weeks. He's had my full attention and I haven't been posting videos because of that. But now he's kind of settled into a groove, got him here in his office, and he's gonna keep an eye on me here, make sure I stay on point. So everybody, this is Finnegan. That's my bud. He's a good boy. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so while the engine's cold, I wanna do the valve adjustment or check the valves. Um, so in order to do that, I gotta get the valve cover off. In order to get the valve cover off, I gotta take the tank off. In order to get the tank off, I gotta take the seat off. In order to take the seat off, I gotta take the seat off. Okay, so let me get that going. Where are they? Where are my little, there they are. Uh, there, now I can release and lift it off. Oh, right, so I'm just using a quarter inch nut driver. So bad. Set this rag up underneath there. And just undo that. Right. And then we'll see if we can take that right off the carb. Like that. We're gonna lose a little bit of fuel like that. Okay, I'm just gonna tighten that on there a little bit so I don't lose it. Okay. Loosen that up. Lift the back up first, and then the front, that's a full tank of fuel. So I'm gonna set that up over here. I just have it on my table saw, but you can put it on anything. Just let the, the uh, petcock hang off the side like that. And you don't wanna, you don't wanna put any stress on that. There's a lot of uh, nipple underneath there. You can see it. Um, that's gonna be a, it's gonna take a lot to work that hose off of that end. So, there's a bike. So I'm going to um, take it off of this end. There's a very short nipple right here. I may even wrap this rag around my pliers so I don't wreck this hose. Just kind of get in there and give it a little twist like that. Okay, so here's the nipple that I took that um, cam cover breather hose off of. Just crosses underneath the the frame here. Now I'm going to remove the valve cover bolts. I'm going to start by loosening them on each side. Like that. Be nice if I could go that way with it. Um, I should be able to sneak that right out of there. Take these and hold them up out of the way. Get that to break free and we'll move it out the other side. So get a little screwdriver. Inspect the gasket over here in the light and make sure there's no cracks. I see a little crack there, but I just want to make sure that there's no cracks going all the way through. And uh, this didn't leak last year. It's it's getting dry. Probably go this summer with it. Uh, perhaps I'll source one out. I might have to do another valve check depending on how many miles I put on it this summer. 
Uh, so I'll source one, get a new one coming, and the next time I do the valves, I'll replace it. And now we are on to torquing the head down. And there's a pattern for that. And a torque specification. It's on, on this table right here. Okay, so now I'm ready to torque this head down. And I have a number 14 socket with an extension on my torque wrench. I have it set to the high side to 25. The book calls out 22 to 25 foot pounds of torque. And uh, my socket's just a little too fat to get down through these axis holes. I don't want it to get stuck in there. So I'm gonna put my socket on the number one bolt head, put my extension down through the axis and brace it so it's nice and straight and square on the bolt head. And I'm just gonna pull nice and slow and evenly on the wrench until I get my click. There you go. I'm gonna go over to number two. Here. Nice. And then we'll go over to one, two, three, four. We'll go to number three. In here. Get on that. Nice. Got a little movement out of that one. And number four. So hopefully this will take care of my weeping gasket. A little movement. One, two, three, four. This is number five over here. Yep, that's good. Five, number six on this side. A little bit. Six, number seven. That one's good. And number eight. Beautiful. I gotta get this cover off. I gotta get to the rotor nut uh, so I can turn this uh, counterclockwise. Get that top dead center, uh, get these rocker arms loose, and then I'll know that all the valves are closed, and then I get my feeler gauges in there uh, to check the tolerances, make any adjustments that are necessary. But before I can get this cover off, I gotta take this shifter lever off, and I get the cover off, I'll take the spark plugs out so that air can move and that this will turn easier for me. And uh, and then I'll check the check the valve. So we'll go ahead and get started on this. It's a eight millimeter bolt there, got an eight millimeter socket, and on the bottom there's a ten millimeter nut. So I'm going to turn the bolt and hold the nut like so, and that has to come all the way out. Can't just loosen it because there is. A detent in there. I'm gonna lose the washer or any of that stuff. So I'll just uh, assemble that. Now I think this came off fairly easy last time. I'll set this over here. Right. Yep, there we go. All right, there's that. Now I'm gonna go around and loosen all these. Yeah, it smells great. There's an arrow here, shows which way we want to turn this, counterclockwise. And there's two marks here. There's a little arrow right here, built right into this case. A little point right there. And I want to turn this until I get to the T, right there. So there's a T. Now I should be able to grab and slide these. See, both of those are loose. You just take this plug. I don't want to. I don't want to mix the plugs up. I want to make sure I keep them um, to their respective sides. So these should. These rocker arms right here should slide back and forth. They're nice and loose. Okay. Um, uh, 
this is the exhaust side because of the exhaust being here. This is the intake valves being the intake here where the, near the carburetor, okay? And um, if I continue around, there. Now you can see this one has moved up, the cam has come up. This one no longer slides, this one's open. So you want both of these to be, you want both of these rocker pairs right here to be um, loose. So I'm gonna go back around. It might take two times around and it might get really hard. And that's why it's important to have uh, your plug out of there so the air can come out. See, now they're both open right now. Or they're, they're under tension. So I gotta go around again. Why? You can put a wrench on here, probably make it a lot easier, but me with my vice-like hands. Okay, I'm gonna put the T right on that point right there and we went all the way around and they're loose again all right so here we are the spec and the book says uh, for the intake side um, between three and five thousandths so you would say oh well that's four thousandths why don't you just check it with four thousandths well you want to see how loose and how tight right and you don't want these to be you don't want the distance between um, this tap it here and the top of the valve you don't want that to be too great because when the bike's running it's going to sound like it's you'll hear it slapping in there uh, now if you look at the angle of the tap it it's uh somewhat something like this right and the head is uh, makes it difficult to get this in there at the right angle so you could get a false reading with your feeling gauge you get like this drag on it. See, it doesn't even want to go in there at, if I'm just like holding it against the head right here and trying to slide that in there. You can see that, that the feeler gauge wants to bend to get under there. So what I got to do is I got to come over on the side a little bit and I got to actually bend it to get it in there. And now I want to push down on the feeler gauge and make sure that my gauge is flat against the top of the valve rod and, you know, parallel with that as I'm feeling around. Because if I if I um, try to do it like this, I'm gonna feel drag and I'm gonna get a false feel. I'm gonna get a false reading off my feeler gauge. So I wanna make sure I'm pushing down, holding the feeler gauge flat against the top of the valve rod there, where the tap it hits the valve rod, okay? So three is sliding in there, nice. Same over here. So um, it's not too tight. <laughs> Uh, so now we'll go and we'll check uh, four thousandths and then uh, we'll check five thousandths after that. So um, here's three, four, and five. Let's put, uh, let's put four under there. See what that does between there. Okay. So four is going under a little more harder than three. Um, and I'm feeling a little drag. Yep, right on the end there, it wants to grab when I pull it out. Let's try this one over here. Okay, I'm gonna bend it just a little to get it under there. I'm gonna try and hold it flat against the top. Yep, all right, so four fits under there, and there's a little bit of a grab. Let's see if I can even get five under there. Okay, there it is, here's five. Here's five thousandths. Let's see if we can get that between there. Five goes, five goes, but there's a lot of drag on it. So I may just, yeah, five doesn't even wanna go underneath that one. Uh, so I may just leave that and now we'll check the exhaust side. Now the exhaust wants to be between five and six thousandths. So I'll try five. This side's a lot easier because the head is lower and the angle is better. You can get under underneath the exhaust side a lot easier. Okay, five is under there and it has nice drag. I can feel it dragging, you know. Might be able to get six thousandths under there, but it's probably gonna be tight. Let's see. Yeah, see, I got a four set under there. That's a little, that's really tight. What I can do is I can probably go another thousand miles on it like this, and then I'll have to make an adjustment. We'll see, but I'll check it after a thousand anyway, because that's what the book does, that's what I do. Okay, so we'll go around, I'll turn this rotor, 
nut. We'll go uh, open up, uh, uh, close those valves, get those rocker arms loose, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay. okay. Three fits under that one okay. Oh, yeah. Here's four thousandths going underneath. Tap it. Okay, four thousandths fits. There's some drag on it. Right. You can see it on the... See that little line there? Some drag. Let's go underneath this one. Okay, not as much. I can feel it. And we'll check the limit of 5,000. If that five goes under there and sloppy. Okay, five's going under hard, but it goes under. Lots of drag on 5,000. So check this one here. It'll force it. Yeah, it doesn't even want to go underneath that one. Okay, so I'm going to say that's good for now on those, and uh, I'll check them again mid-season. Now I'm going to check five thousandths between, on the exhaust side, it's between five and six thousandths. Uh, I don't really have an in-between to measure with. Five fits under there. It's got the same amount of drag as the other side. Um, let's see if I can put six under there. Six thousands. Okay, six is going, but there's a lot of drag. So um, I'll wait and uh, check these again mid-season, and um, perhaps I'll have to make an adjustment then, and I'll make a separate video for that. Oh, hey, I almost forgot uh, the plug. Right here's the plug on this side. Looks pretty good actually, and. Um, Book says uh, between 24, 0, 024 and 028. I got 025 on this gauge right here. I'm just gonna make sure that clears under there. That's good. That's good. I'm not gonna adjust that because that plug looks like it was burning pretty good. But I probably am gonna put some new plugs in it on my mid-season check. So I'll get uh, both of these plugs gapped, put them back in and everything in reverse. And then we'll start this thing up, get it warm and um, drain the oil out of it. man hey how you doing look go ahead i know it smells a little greasy but that a boy all right so i just warmed it all up and now i'm gonna dump the oil out of it so let me get all that stuff together and uh we'll do that oil filter right there's a part number okay and uh this is the oil i'm using right here okay that 1040 SJ and this is a, a 12 millimeter bolt that's where the filter is behind there and this is a 17 millimeter bolt that's the drain plug okay 
So, I just have, have my wrench right here. And I'm just gonna crack it a little bit just to loosen it like that. And I'm gonna get my drain pan under there. <laughs> and say a little prayer. And I'll start taking this off. And we'll see what happens. The washer looks good. Oh God. All right, I'm gonna loosen the filler cap a little bit. That'll allow it to breathe. All right. I mean, you just gotta go for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I got a rag nearby. <laughs> Trying to keep that from getting all over my garage floor. And there she goes, mister. I mean, I don't think there's a whole hell of a lot you're going to be able to do here. You're going to get, you're going to get it on you. And then one day, you just pour that into the pan. Where's the old one? Where's the new one? <laughs> okay. Okay. And then what else we got? We got a, this came in the kit right here, and this part number. Okay, so it came with the filter, came with this O-ring, and it comes with this gasket, which fits that, and it came with this one, which is for a different cover, which we don't need. So now I gained one of those. Okay, it does not come with the spring, which goes on there, and it does not come with the washer. It just comes with the, the gaskets and the filter. So if your um, washer's marred up or your spring is shot, you're gonna have to uh, source those parts. But my stuff is in good shape. So I am just gonna take a look at down in here, see what's going on in there, a little sludgy. You know, could be from road dust, whatever. But there's no metal, <laughs> no aluminum in there. You know, nothing out of the ordinary. So we'll get this cleaned up, we'll put the new gasket in there, get that O-ring on there, and we'll put it all back together. I should probably show you this part too. So gasket, right? We'll push that up in there that I should snap right in and turn easily and then spring and then flat washer and then filter I said and then filter if it's on there nice and snug and then it's all about making sure you thread that in there without getting it cross threaded back up into the underside of the bike, right? And that was on there like so. Okay, so I'm gonna crawl back under the bike. I'll put this stuff back on and um, we'll start dumping some oil in. Yeah, okay. So we're all buttoned up underneath. All pretty, tightened down. Uh, this one is uh, 22 foot pounds. This was 25 foot pounds over here on the drain plug. And uh, now I'm getting ready to dump some fresh juice down in there, okay? So I'll get to doing that. Okay, so I've run the bike since I put the oil in and now I'm just gonna double check to make sure that the level's good. And on these particular bikes, you take this filler stick out here, this filler plug, which also has the stick on it. And you can see, I'm just gonna wipe it off here. Stick it back in. And they don't want you to screw it in when you're checking the oil. You just touch it to the top of the case and you can see we're good. Good to go. Okay, so I just got done cleaning the air filter. I took the seat back off, obviously. And all I did was uh, take out the uh, air filter here. This is a foam air filter and soaked it in some mineral spirits. Don't use gasoline. Uh, there are some special uh, cleaners out there for foam air filters 
but I soaked it in some mineral spirits, old school style, and just uh, um, patted it out like that, and all the debris and old oil came out of it. And then I just folded it up and, and squeezed it a bunch to get all the mineral spirits out. And then I uh, let it dry out in the sun and brought it back in and I put it into a gallon Ziploc bag with some 90 weight oil. And I saturated it with the 90 weight oil and I let it sit there for a minute, all saturated. And then I folded it up again and squeezed all the excess out. I actually ended up rolling this up into a rag, like a burrito, and squeezed the excess out into the rag. And now I'm just putting it all back together now. Okay, so I'm gonna button this up, and uh, I wanna make sure that the filter is touching all the way around inside the filter box here, so nothing can get by. And uh, this little hold down device goes in there, goes underneath the tabs in the back right here, see? Like that. And I wiped this all out too before I took the filter out. I, I made sure to wipe out any debris that was in here um, just to keep it from going down any further. And uh, now I'm just going to put the top back on and button this up. Okay? There you go. Okay, so I'm just checking out the chain here. I'm happy with the slack. Um, before I put it to bed, um, before the winter, I uh, adjusted the chain and cleaned it. But I think I'm just gonna spray a little more of this chain wax on there. Uh, this is what I'm using. I don't care, I'm not sponsored by it. I spent my money on it already. And you can decide on what you wanna use, but this is what I use. I like the way it uh, just sticks to the chain and doesn't fling all over the place. So I'm just gonna spin the tire here and just put a quick coat of that on my chain. All right, so I'm taking a look at this old crusty brake fluid reservoir here. And you can see that score line in there, that's the fill line. And you want to do it on this side over here. Where am I? Right there. Because if you do it on that side over there, you're going to overfill it on this side. So I do it to the low side. And uh, good to go. I'm going to button that up before I drop something in there. And now the most important thing about checking the brake fluid is making sure you got your wristband back on there. Okay? So we can check that off the list. All right, so I want to throw some lithium grease, general purpose lithium grease in this Zerk right here. There's one on each side. These are the swing arm pivots. So I'm going to put some grease in until I see some coming out around that dust cap right there. And then we're going to check the run out on the front and back tire, check the air pressure, we'll make sure all the blinks are working and make sure our, the headlight and high low beam and brake light are working with the foot pedal and the um, hand lever. And what else? Anyway, let's keep going. All right, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this on the camera or not, but here we go. Let's stick my gun on there. I can hear it coming out. Here it is right there. See it squeezing out? That's all I need to see. I'll wipe that up. Take you around on the other side. This one's in a little different spot, but right here next to the pivot bolt. Like that. Just squeeze it in. You don't want it to come out around the zerk. You want it to come out around the dust cap. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. All right, I'm going to get those uh, zerk fittings wiped up because I don't like grease hanging out all over the place. And we'll move on to uh, checking the run out. Okay, so now then, all I'm going to do to check out for run out here in my shop is I got a jack stand right there, right next to the tire. And I'm going to put a little daylight in there for you. Here you go. Hold on, let me get you set up. Okay. You see that? That little gap between the edge of the tire and the edge of the jack stand. Okay, now all I'm gonna do, make sure you guys are still in focus there. All I'm gonna do is just spin the tire. I'm gonna watch that gap. Let's see if there's any significant wobble. It's not too bad. So I'll do that on the front and the back here. And I'll also check it this way. While we're back here, let's go ahead and do that. 
and they'll probably check it like this when I go get the inspection sticker today. So now I'm putting it against the tread and I'm just gonna watch that gap between the tread and the jack stand, give it a little spin. And this will tell me if I got any flat spots or if the bead is moved on the tire. And you can see that's, that's pretty good, man. You know, can't complain about that. These tires were put on last year. So, and I've only put 3,000 miles on them, so they should be good. But I just like to check everything out before I bring it for inspection. That way I'm not getting surprised when I'm there at the shop and um, they don't end up saying, hey, yeah, we can do that for you for 200 bucks. So if I can catch it here in my own shop before I bring it there, I'll do that. But so far, so good. So I'll do the front tire, same thing. Just give it a quick eyeball, see if there's anything significant happening uh, that I can catch here and see if I can fix it here before I try to go get my sticker. All right, I'm gonna start this thing up and check the lights and the blinks. Cold start. sure all the gauges and all the lights are working there so it looks like my neutral lights working high beam light is working turn signal light is working I'm a big guy so um, 24 front 36 rear that's what the book says so I'm gonna go with that Let's see I'm running 20 up front here so we'll put a little bit in Cold. 26, 24. Yeah. Oh boy, she's soft. 26 back there. Take that. Take that. All right, I think I'm ready to take this thing for a ride. So yeah, I got the bike um, uh, as part of payment for a tiling job that I did. I got a uh, few hundred bucks and this bike and trade for tiling a kitchen. Uh, a woman owned it. She laid it over on some gravel in a, in a corner and she bent the peg, broke the mirror, I think this blinker, the two blinkers on this side were broken um, and scraped up the pipes and the um, crash bars, which are underneath the toolbox right there. I don't know if you can see those. Uh, I took them off. Um, uh, yeah, so I straightened out the peg. Oh, the handlebars were bent. I straightened those out as best I could. I didn't want to tweak on them too much because I didn't want to ruin them. I mean, this one's back just a little bit. But bars are cheap for this thing, they're like 35 bucks, seven eighths bar. So I'm gonna get some new bars this summer and put them on. Uh, everything's stock. Uh, the seat came with, I think that's called a king and queen two up seat. I think it's, it's period, you know, it's a 1978. So it's a period seat, but it's not the stock seat. Matter of fact, there's a person um, who posted on Craigslist recently, he has a whole bunch of vintage motorcycle seats that he wants to get rid of. And in the photograph, I saw a couple of Honda seats that might, um, that are, that are this, um, that are the CB uh, seats. So maybe a road trip is in, in order. 
and I'll go down there and check on one of those seats, get it recovered, and put the put the stock seat back on. Although I do like that seat; it's pretty comfortable. Um, this box came with it. I think that's an that's an old old box. I'm not quite sure if anybody knows what that is. There's no markings on it. There's no um, uh, brand or anything like that. I can't figure out what it is, but it's a great little uh, top box on the back with a cushion. Uh, what did I do to it? I put a new mirror on. I put uh, blinkers on this side. Um, other than clean it all up and the work that you saw me do to it today, it's got, it came with a new chain and sprocket on it. Uh, I think the drive sprocket and the rear sprocket were brand new and the chain. Uh, uh, the tires were cracked up, so I got some new Dunlops on there. Uh, just the OEM, you know, nothing special. And I put this windscreen on just because I thought it was cool. It's nice to have. Cuts down on some of the uh, buffeting. And uh, that's about it. I think I had to put a new headlight bulb in it. You know? Other than that, just uh, run it. It's good to go.